Today's an exciting day because we get to talk about a horn that, while I no longer have, was very special to me in the time I did have it. A little over a year ago, I purchased this instrument for $150 with its bell throat looking like it had been run over. Let's talk about it. How's it going everybody? It's your host Sam here from the Samuel Plays Brass channel. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back to another episode of Scholastic Brass Month, Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. This week on Scholastic Brass Month, we are talking about all things French horn. Now, I have already talked on this channel about the flagship model of the CG Con lineup, their 8D French horn. This is currently my instrument, it was not my instrument at the time of recording, and it is a really, really special one. You'll find these occasionally in school lineups, but make no mistake, this is one of the most tried and true professional quality French horns of all time. Today, we talk about something that's on one hand its predecessor, and on the other hand its sort of more intermediate cousin, the Con 6D. The 6D has kind of an interesting and confusing history. It was Kahn's first take on the double horn, and they first released it with a Schmidt-style piston exchange valve instead of the rotor trigger that we're used to seeing today. But by 1935, they'd replaced it with the rotor we know and love today, and at that point it became very popular in symphony orchestras. That was the first generation of the Model 6D, back then 6-D. Then the second generation is kind of more like what we see in this video. This one was manufactured in Elkhart around the year 1963, so relatively old, but not like 1935 type old. But the third generation 6D is a very recent, complete redesign and reimagining by Con Selmer. This is interesting. Let me show you my 8D one more time. So off the original Con 6D, the Con company took the mouth pipe, all the way to here, and the bell tail, and in between where, you know, all the valves and slides are, they stuck an 8D chassis. So the new 6D is about half 6D and half 8D, which is really, really interesting. First of all, there are some ergonomic improvements there, as this is a more conventional crusty wrap than what the 6D is built on, and that Schmidt-style uh, crusty wrap 6D was a little bit awkward to hold, I have to admit. But also, all that nickel silver in between the brass bell and mouthpipe adds some extra clarity to the sound, which we'll address later with how the 6D plays. But this is a really interesting move for the 6D because it's almost being made to be more like a professional horn now, just with a smaller bell throat than the 8D. You can even order it with a removable bell, as in 6DS if you want. Now, although that modern 6D is quite a deviation from its historic roots, for the purposes of this video, I'm exclusively going to be talking about the historic 6D, which many people grew up with and knew as not exactly what it is today. Once, it was a professional's instrument. Now, it's sort of horseshoeing back to that point, but in between, that middle generation of Con 6D was sort of ousted by the 8D for the professional spot in the Con lineup, but was regarded as a good, solid intermediate horn, many of which could be found in school's lineups in varying condition. For instance, a school liquidated that Con 6D to me in terrible condition, but nonetheless, they're good, solid horns built like tanks, and that is why I'm talking about it today on Scholastic Brass Month. So let's explore. I'm going to pull up some pictures now that I took of this 6D before it left my possession last year so that we can walk through some of its features together. First things first, the mouthpiece receiver on the 6D is a very large US Morse taper, so steer clear of any Euroshank mouthpieces for sure, but even some US shank mouthpieces aren't perfect and will go a little too far into the shank. This includes Bach, Giarnelli, Holton Farkas, unfortunately a lot of really solid mouthpieces. I was lucky that my Dennis Wick 4N was a very good fit for the horn, both physically in terms of the shank measurements and sonically. It actually was a better match for the 6D than for my current 8D, so I ended up looking into different things for the 8D, but as far as large shank mouthpieces go, Dennis Wick's worth a look there. I mentioned the 6D is built on a crusty wrap, but it's a rather odd one compared to the more traditional Con 8D or Holton Farkas H179. Those are much more common forms of crusty wraps on the modern market. The 6D looks a little weird from the fact that its dump slide is squirted out at a rather odd angle with some 90 degree bends you wouldn't expect to see, 
and the fact that on the back of the horn, the two tuning slides, which are usually next to each other and coming out of different tubes and facing the same way, are actually facing opposite ways and coming out of the same tube. That is highly abnormal. As far as technical specifications go, the bore of the CON 6D at the valve section is the same as the 8D at 0.468 inches in diameter. However, the bell is a little bit of a different story. I believe the 8D has a 12 and a quarter inch flare, whereas the 6D's flare is 12 inches on the dot. Still a reasonably large bell flare, but where it really differs is the throat of the bell, which is just before the flare, and that's where your hand goes. The 6D has a much smaller and less spacious bell throat than the more spacious 8D. Quick interjection here, are you a brass enjoyer or enthusiast who would like to see more content like this in bigger and better capacities? If so, please consider checking out patreon.com slash samuelplaysbrass. You can find the link in the description below. For just a few bucks a month, you can ensure bigger and better content on the channel in return for a variety of perks. If that sounds like something you're interested in, once again, patreon.com slash samuelplaysbrass. Back to the video. Out of the very many French horns that I've played in the last two years where I've really been serious about horn playing, the 6D is one of, if not the easiest playing horn I've tried. It is almost outrageously flexible over several octaves. Just on the Dennis Wick 4N alone, which is an 18 millimeter inner diameter, fairly large, and a quite large and deep cup and bore, it was able to go from well into the pedal regions to well above high C with extraordinary clarity. The intonation of the horn was also pretty consistent, and I think many students will find this to be the case due to the small bell throw, unlike this rather large one, making it very easy to find the optimal hand position. You basically just put your hand where it naturally goes, especially if it's a smaller sized hand like this one on the 6D, and it just goes where it needs to go and everything slots and centers just wonderfully. Another strength of the 6D that probably rings even truer for the 8D, but is fairly good on the 6D nonetheless, is the fact that the non-trigger notes, or the F side of the horn, is very strong compared to some school grade double horns. I've mentioned on the channel before, and you might have heard me mention, that a lot of school grade double horns play well with the trigger pressed, but they start losing a lot of clarity and intonation once you let go of the trigger. I really like to keep the trigger unpressed in the middle and low registers, and even a little bit higher sometimes, depending on the setting than some players would advocate for, just because I like the wider tone of the F side playing on a longer pipe as opposed to the shorter B flat pipe. And so I like a horn like the 6D that does that well. That's part of the reason I have an 8D in my hands now. Now before I get any farther talking about the tone of the Con 6D, I need to provide the reminder and the disclaimer that I got this instrument with a run over bell throat, and then I inexpertly stuck it onto mandrels and dent rollers and put tools to it to try and expand and burnish that bell throat back into a vaguely circular shape. This has serious acoustical consequences, and it's partly for this reason that the tone of this 6D is not indicative of all 6Ds on the market. 
When I played this 6D softly, the tone was rich and warm and dense, almost velvety, the same sort of quality as the 8D. However, if I stepped on the gas, whereas the 8D would maintain a very rich and warm sound, the 6D would punch through walls and the sound would begin to break up a little bit. I noticed this most when I was playing with the Spokane Horn Club, which is basically just a bunch of casuals who get together and play horn in the park. When I would play softly, it would blend in just lovely with all the other Crosby raps and even the Geyer raps around it, since the 6D is sort of an intermediary with that small bell throat between the big large Crosby's and the slightly smaller Geyer's. But if I started playing forte or fortissimo, then the tone would get away from me, it would stick out of the group, and it really was not very pleasant at that point. I can't personally say if a new or better condition 6D would sort of behave the same way. Now taking a step back and bearing all the aforementioned in mind, the Con 6D has great value on the French horn market as far as intermediate horns go. What I mean is, it can be a ton of bang for your buck. Rather than just being an exceptional player, it's a good solid horn with a reasonably good tone and a very easy sense of playability for the advancing student that can sometimes be found for pitifully cheap online. Now, whether that's because it was run over in a previous life or otherwise is sometimes left to be determined, but if you can find a 6D for cheap, it is really good for first timers on double horn or people who like the crusty wrap of the 8D but want a little bit more clarity while still retaining some of that 8D tone color, the 6D does really, really well in these areas. And for that reason, I'm going to be giving it a hefty SAM seal of approval, like many of the other instruments we discussed on Scholastic Brass Month. It's certainly no 8D, but it's a very solid horn overall. Some honestly might prefer the 6D. A lot of people will find it easier to play and control. And frankly, the new 6D might be close to on par with the 8D, just a little bit different thanks to that small bell throat. That'll just about wrap up my soapbox piece on the Con 6D. I hope you enjoyed learning about it as much as I enjoyed playing it and making this video for you, and I hope you'll stick around for more of French Horn Week on Scholastic Brass Month. We got plenty more content coming up, which I'm really excited for, and I hope you are too. Make sure to check that you're actually subscribed to the Samuel Plays Brass channel, unlike the vast majority of my viewers. That's a lot of unsubscribed viewers right there. So, no pressure, but feel free to join the club. Until next time, you can find more reviews in the playlist up in the top right corner, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks for watching everybody. If you want to support the creation of bigger and better content on the Samuel Plays Brass channel, have your name featured right here, and a whole host of other perks and benefits, then please consider pledging your support at patreon.com slash samuelplaysbrass. For now, you can find more videos in the end screen cards to my left.